Good morning, everyone. Thank you and welcome to our Veeam Availability Suite version 10 webinar. We really appreciate you taking some time to join us today to learn more about Veeam and backup and everything the solution has to offer. My name is Carissa Eatman and I am the Senior Marketing Coordinator at Keller Schrader and on behalf of the Veeam team and our team, um, it's my pleasure to welcome you today. Click through my slides. So here's our basic agenda for today. It's pretty straightforward. I'm doing the welcome and logistics portion right now. I'm gonna introduce you to our presenters. We're gonna go through our Veeam V10 presentation and then we'll save our Q&A for the end. And as you saw on your invitations and the information when you signed up as our thank you on behalf of Veeam and thanks to Veeam, your gift for attending today, we're gonna to send you a um, gift card for some pizza. Normally they send these out beforehand and everybody enjoys pizza, but with the pandemic, we kind of have a little, a little snag there, but um, we're gonna make sure that we get those to you following the webinar. Our only stipulation is that we ask you to stay for the duration so you hear the entire presentation. And we hope to start a conversation during this webinar. So um, as a little incentive for engagement, we're going to ask that you put some questions in the Q&A window. And if you're one of the first to engage with our team, we're gonna give you on, um, thanks to Veeam, we're gonna give you a drop bottom tote cooler in Cancuzzi. It's kind of a, a little bit of a tongue twister there. So we just hope to, to share some insights and get a little bit more um, information from you on what you want to hear. So if you'll put those questions in the Q&A window, we'll make sure to say thanks with this gift. So with that, let me introduce you to our experts today. Um, our featured presenter from Veeam is Kevin Scott Carafa. He is the National Technical Partner Manager at Veeam Software. He's gonna be taking us through our presentation today. We also have on the line Matt Barton. He's the Director of Data Services from Keller Schrader and he's um, our resident Veeam expert and he can answer any questions that you have as we go on in the chat. So with that, let me hand it over to Kevin. Thanks, Carissa. Should be displaying the, am I displaying the right one or the wrong display? Let's see. Oh, looks great. Looks good. All right. Well, thank you for everybody for joining today. I understand it's a, a little bit of a rainy day in Indiana right now, but I come to you from Grand Rapids where uh, good for us, uh, which is rare for us, but it's sunny today and almost a high of 100 degrees. My name is Kevin Scott Carafa. I am a National Technical Partner Manager for Veeam. We'll talk about a number of things today, V10 updates, new products from Veeam, some other products that have had some updates, and just some really exciting technology. And I think you'll find this to be discussed in a different way that's normal. Even though I am technical, we're going to be having a business conversation for these products along the way as well. So here's our agenda. It seems jam-packed there, but it will flow pretty well, and I think it should go uh, in an exciting way that you'll learn a lot about Veeam technology and how it relates to your business. Ransomware, Office 365, AWS, Azure Backup, Endpoint Protection, and NAS Backup. So the discussion here, Veeam, we were acquired for $5 billion in March, and why I mentioned this, this is a real dollar value. What's changed for Veeam? So what's changed for Veeam is they want to accelerate us even more than we already have, and we'll show some depictions of pictures talking about our acceleration rate. If you look at this $5 billion, we had $1.2 billion in revenue, one of 34 companies in the history of the world to be a pure software play and hit a billion dollars in revenue. What this means, are we're moving to a U.S.-based headquarters, and our founders are now consultants to the company, no longer employed by Veeam. We do see an influx right now of spending for our sled business, especially from our partner. We do 100% of our business through partners and our partner, Keller Schrader, today. So let's just talk about the market in general, data protection. So you look at, even though we have a $1.2 billion run rate, in the last half of 2019, we grew at 21%. That's four times faster than even our, our, our rivals on here. And I understand without competition, we don't have business. So I understand that you can see the other numbers there from the competitors. So this is our trajectory, 49 straight quarters of double digit growth. Really phenomenal. And it's thanks to a partner like Keller Schrader and customers like you that are on the phone today. Looking at this picture, there's something very important to note. This is a pure software play. We sell zero in hardware. We leverage partner like Keller Schrader to sell you that hardware because we must exist somewhere on some hardware. 
whether that's repurposing of hardware or a virtual stack, but it exists somewhere on hardware, we'd love you to buy that through Keller Schrader. So let's talk about ransomware protection. We all have some idea what ransomware is. It's the sabotaging by actual criminals that are changing the blocks of data so that you have no longer have access and it's not clear path to that data. This decryption is not possible without removal tools and unfortunately the criminals have you at bay. There's two main examples of ransomware. Ransomware lockers where they actually lock the computer and then crypto lockers that crypto lock the data which deletes the original copy. And this is why they held you for ransom. So a quick question. What year do you think ransomware was created? A lot of people get this wrong. They think, well, dot com, uh, maybe the early 2000s before the 2008 recession. It's actually created in 1989. So think about that. It's 31 years ago ransomware was created. Really before internet was something that you could just connect to your house to in high-speed networks. If we look at the update on ransomware landscape, because of the pandemic, it's even accelerated even further. You can see the mainstay here. In this picture here, you can see a lot of it hitting governments and SLED. But we'll talk about a depiction actually shows you a graph where it's not just SLED, part of the business segment. So this is the average payment from Q4 2019 to, January, uh, to March 2020, January, February, March. There's a 33% uptick in ransomware. And what we're seeing is the average ransom payment now is $111,000. This is from Coveware's actual website. And from this gra graph, you can see that it's not just sled business, that's 12%. Consumer services, no one is free of getting ransomware in any of these segments. So here's a concept. Now you got Bruce Springsteen, the boss, one of my favorite singers. He's got a Born to Run cassette. Some of you may have not seen a cassette before, depending upon uh, when you were born. But looking at this is my era here, cassette tape. We punch out those tags in that cassette tape, and we open us up to the possibility that no one's going to overwrite whatever's on that, whether it's music or data. Now we all know we could put tape over that, Scotch tape, and then we could write on it. The concept here is. I backed up the tape so I'm protected, right? Not necessarily true. So I did a partner event, and it was two days before I was on the highway. Two days before I was on the highway driving, and I lived by a tape vault manufacturing company. And on the side of their van, when I'm driving by it before pandemic, it said, ransomware protection, we guarantee it. And I thought to myself, guarantee it? Wow, that's really powerful. Is that actually true? So then I'm at the partner conference and I present my material on ransomware before we actually released it. We released our new software, V10, that includes this protection on February 18th. And we do now have 175,000 downloads. I appreciate the announcement Keller Schrader made. We put it together, we've had 20,000 more downloads in just that month. So it's the fastest adopted software that I know of. I know when you think about being software, you talk about technology. I've been married 26 years. My wife is super intelligent. She loves technology as well. We're obviously able, to, obviously able to communicate. A new version comes out for her phone. She still hasn't upgraded it. It's been like 10 months she won't upgrade it because she's, not, she's fearful of not being stable. Not the same case with Veeam. 175,000 copies are running in production three months after it's been released. So it's a fast adoption. But back to the tape discussion. So speaking with him, a guy comes to me and said, you know, um, I really like your stories. You talk about ransomware recovery and what's coming out with Veeam. Let me tell you a story. $10 million company, we were hit with ransomware, but this is how we were hit. We went to a tape vault that we backed up data from 340 days ago. When we got the tape back from the vault, we restored it. It had an active bot that got through our file system and encrypted our data. We were contacted by ransomware, the criminals, they said they wanted a million dollars to decrypt the data. We paid them a million dollars. They came back and said, we only decrypted half of it. We want a million more. Well, it's only a $10 million run rate company. So they said no. And that actually, unfortunately for him, he lost his job and the company closed his doors because of that ransomware. They're never, never able to recover that data and they were not a Veeam customer. So how do we recover that before B10? So we have a 32110 backup strategy as well as the other things we'll go through here. 
but it's in time of infection to exploit that you can actually recover this data. The 32110 rule, which is a, a mandate from Veeam, is three copies of data, two different media types, one copy off-site, one air-gapped, and we have the ability to verify backups with our technology for scan from malware, viruses, ransomware bots, whatever that software technology is with any command line virus scanning company integrates with Veeam technology. So to talk about ransomware, we have the ability, we came up with in 2010, the ability to do one instant VM recovery, virtual machine recovery, less than 15 minutes, one at a time. Well, as it stands today, our competition, all of our competition has come up with the same ability to do one at a time. And I'm always very careful to say, this is what we have today, because when I'm presenting this, someone else could come up with something similar. I can tell you, we come up with something in V10 that no one has today. Not only one brick at a time, if there was a disaster, you had to recreate a building or a business or a data center. Wouldn't you rather, instead of one brick at a time, have the ability to build an entire house in seconds, in 15 minutes? So this is not my house, this is my dream home. But this just shows you on the left-hand side of all different bricks, and they could be VMware VMs or Hyper-V VMs or Nutanix VMs. Anything altogether, less than 15 minutes, hundreds and thousands of VMs. And the story here is that someone came up to me when I was talking about this technology coming in the future in January. He said, listen, I'm a customer of Veeam. I have 81 VMs. I got hit with ransomware. It took me four hours to recover those 81 VMs with your instant recovery, and I'm so thankful. And I said, did you renew your Veeam? He said, yes, I did. I said, well, I think you'll be really happy if that ever happens again because you'll be able to do all 81 in less than 15 minutes. So this is just, again, a software upgrade. This is something that no one else has today. This ability is anything you backed up with a physical server or cloud VMs or VMs in general. DR migration includes Nutanix, VMware, and Hyper-V. All can be imported into vSphere in seconds. Now, this is a, a partner check. We do 100% of our business with partners, so this would partner with you would be going to Keller Strader for uh, a massive year for doing with Veeam. But if you look at this payday, something happens to this payday. So we're, we're, we're paying out to Keller Schrader as an example. Let's say Keller Schrader is, for this example, not a Veeam customer. You can see the Veeam superhero there, and we'll talk about that theme later, protecting the data of a customer. Well, a problem happened. Payday came and went without being paid. So how would it recover that with everybody else's technology? So let's take Veeam and put us over there for a minute and cover everybody else's data center technology data protection. So this check is an image that sits in the SQL Server database. And it sits in a two terabyte database. So how long would it take everybody else in the data protection scheme to recover two terabytes? I can't see the Q&A chat. But if you were to input something like that, we're, you know, we're talking about maybe two, four hours. So let's go with the four hour window. So we restore the data, four hours, we launch SQL Server, we launch the database, oh, the file was still corrupt. What do we have to do now if we don't have Veeam? We need to do it again, go back again. So we go back four more hours, four more hours of time, we load that SQL database, we launch it, mm, still corrupt. What do we have to do now? We do it again. We keep doing these four hour block segments until we get to the data that's actually live and we can use it and figure out how we didn't get paid. We're waiting on that million dollar check. Or we do it with Veeam. So that's 12 hours for one file. With Veeam, we have the ability to look at backup images and launch them in something called virtual labs. Less than two minutes, we launch that backup, we see if it's a good file, virtually copy paste the file. That's all we have to do. And it works with every application ever created. So we have individual ones for SQL Server, Exchange, SharePoint, Oracle, as examples, SAP. And the key here is with applications that are not specific to us, so a universal application data restore. So this would be uh, Lotus Notes Domino, someone asked the other day, yes, we can instantly restore. Novell Network, you're still running it? Yes, we can. So all, this, all these different data sets in less than two minutes, we can do this. So two minutes or 12 hours. That's a Veeam difference, and we don't charge extra for this feature. Now, that was before V10. What about now with V10? Something called immutability. Immutability is the ability to not 
not have to alter blocks and not be able to alter blocks of data sets by any means, making you immutable from change. It's based on an object lock technology first introduced in Amazon, and we'll talk about the Azure functionality that's really what I want to focus on, the Azure functionality that's being added. And it's just read-only files that cyber criminals can't manipulate in any way. So I got a question for you. My data is in the cloud. I'm protected, right? Everybody seems to think that. We'll talk about our backup for Azure product later, but really data is in the cloud, I feel I'm protected. So you have to ask yourself, and this actually comes from my dad. So my, my mom and dad are, are close to 80 years old and they listened to a recent podcast I did on endpoint protection, which we'll cover today, in Aero. And my mom and dad, who are not technically savvy, which is fine, uh, they said, my dad says, I just hear re one recurring theme. I hear Mick Jagger singing, get off my cloud. And this is really the theme here. Wouldn't you like cyber criminals and ransomware to get off your cloud? I mean, really, you don't want them to encrypt your cloud data either. And that's really a difference maker here because we have technology called scale out, backup repository, where it sits in your primary storage, DAS, NAS, DDoP appliance, goes to performance tier, and then kind of goes to something called S3. S3 buckets or S3 object storage is just nothing more than a protocol in a different way to store files. S3 is a protocol like an iPad talking to an iPhone, an iOS platform, or a Windows machine talking to a Windows machine. It's just a protocol access. And then object storage is a different way to store files and usually used for archival purposes. So S3 object lock, it's based on technology called Worm. Worm is write once, read many. So two things, so I, you don't know my background unless you look me up already. Uh, out of school, I worked for General Motors so many years covering OSPEC systems, the first network attached storage company. Went from OSPECs, worked at NetApp for 20 years, spent a year at Western Digital, and now I've been at Veeam two and a half years. The whole entire time covering storage, both from a hardware and software platform. So I'm very familiar with Worm technology. The problem with Worm technology for hardware the drives fail at seven to 10 times more frequently than normal drives. Also, when they do fail, you normally have to scrap, destroy, mutilate, manipulate that hardware in a way that's disastrous to that platform. You don't need to do that with software. This is an example in the AWS console, exactly what happens. This box gets checked when you check this box in Veeam. Again, we don't have a cloud tax. If you want to go to Azure with Veeam, we don't charge you more money to be this. This is our Veeam Backup Replication server box here. So you check this box, make recent backups immutable for one day to infinity, realizing that you will consume that cloud storage, but that'll be paid through Azure as an example, or AWS. Remember that you're immutable for that time frame. So what does that physically mean? That means those blocks cannot change. No one, not me, not the founders of Veeam, not Matt Barton, not Carissa, not Jen Rose, no one from Veeam or any partner or any customer in the world can ever change those blocks from that time frame. You are guaranteed if you scan those for bots and viruses and malware and then lock those blocks for that time frame to not be able to get ransomware. And we don't charge extra for this feature. So what's the portability look like? Today, Amazon S3, we uh, have a cloud Storage partner, partner called Cloudian, which is a data center technology, can exist in your data center. Wasabi and Zadera, Azure Blob is very, very close. And understand that there are 58 other storage devices like HPE StoreOnce, NetApp Storage Grid, that are on the roadmap to support those devices. And they're adding them every day. Let's talk about another way to recover from ransomware, Secure Restore. We actually have the ability, now you look at when you get a mal malware or virus. So the malicious files download, I'm gonna give you a, a quick story about my son. I have, I have four sons, I have a 13 year old son, super techie, we rebuild servers on the weekend, give you some idea, he's been doing that since he's been nine. So he has a Windows 10 laptop and he is this big gamer. So in January he did a Veeam backup and it goes both to a copy to the cloud, of course, and then we also have a Veeam back replication server. I run a Dell server at my house. Not everybody has that, but I run V10 in our house and I keep a copy there. So in May 8, he decided he was gonna run another backup. What he didn't know, we actually backed up malware. It took over his laptop, 
Now, you, you think to yourself, well, how much data can a 13-year-old have? <laughs> a lot more than you think. So he has a capture card, if you're a gamer, and he streams himself streaming, playing videos while sharing with 30 to 40 people at the same time. Of course, he utilized about 800, megabit, 800 megabits of bandwidth on my house. The key here is streaming PS4, PS3, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Nintendo GameCube, don't even get me started. So all these files are streaming to recover. Now, he downloaded malware and it took over his C drive, it says wiping C drive. He's freaking out and I can't blame him. So we go and we go to the Veeam backup server, we run something called Secure Restore, we scan for the malware, we find it, we decide to not restore with that, we restore to an active file system, 500 gig, three hours later, he's all back in business with full recovery. Amazing, this can be done in your business. So it's a full VM restore, direct restore. You can restore this right to Azure. And it's very simple to do, it's literally a couple clicks. We have an expert technology certification called VMCE, a Veeam certified expert. And I just got trained on the 2020 version and I can assure you that I did this in about 15 minutes. It's amazing technology. But how do you know what's happening? Because their competitors let you know, hey, you've got a problem, really easy with Veeam. It's green means good, yellow means you might be in trouble, red's not good. So we have this color chart in our Veeam 1. Veeam 1 is part of Veeam Availability Suite. It's Veeam Back Publication and Veeam 1 together. Veeam 1 is Report and Monitoring Agent Software. So you look at integrity and visibility. Pretty easy to tell where there's a problem. You look at number 17 there in the middle, in the top. That looks like it might be an issue. We can dig into that and look at Rick Vanover, who's actually an employee of Veeam. He's originally from Grand Rapids as well. So, but you can dig into here and see exactly the time frame that the recovery was done and when the activity was happening. But how do you buy this technology from Keller Schrader? You buy it in Veeam Universal Licensing. So you can buy this, and there's four options. One is an essential package. And one includes the Veeamability Suite, which is Veeam 1 and is included as well. And this is how you buy these licenses. They come in 10 packs. And a smaller version come in five packs. So here's the real cool part about Veeam. One licensing model for everything with Veeam Universal Licensing. You can put a copy in the cloud. You can put a copy on virtual. You can back up physical. You can back up SAP, Oracle. Whatever that is that you want to back up, you can have different hypervisors. We integrate with all that. We keep track of the licenses for you. So if you have 10 licenses and you're using 10 of them, we don't, you don't have to check in with us when you move them around. They're very portable. Any questions on that? So let's talk about Not feedback. So far. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, no it's coming in. Not so far. We're good. Okay. All right, great. Remember, you get some gifts. By the way, the Superman shirt that you saw, the Veeam Superman shirt, the way we will be giving away one of those for a Veeam question at the end as well. Who doesn't want to be a superhero? <laughs> New Veeam backup for Microsoft Azure. So if you look at data law, it still happens in the cloud. It actually does. So the one thing that you need to understand about data sharing, which we'll cover more in Office 365, Azure, AWS, platforms like that, they say right in their language that it's a shared model. We'll discuss that in more in detail. The shared model actually says that you are responsible as the customer for the data they're responsible for the infrastructure. And right here it says that, you can see the software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service on-prem, it varies by type, responsibility transfers to the cloud provider, the data portion is your responsibility as the customer. So when you look at Azure, backup for Azure, the big key here is it's Azure native support. It's cost-effective solution, we actually have a cost estimation tool for Backup for Azure. It's a secure platform and it's cloud mobile. I'll tell you why it's cloud mobile. First of all, you can do rapid deployments of VMs and data protecting in the cloud. It's agentless backups. You don't have to worry about managing agents in Azure themselves, which some other platforms you do have to manage those. It's automated efficiency. We use Azure VM snapshots. It's automation including what Microsoft's already created. So we leverage those technologies when we use Backup for Azure. It's fast, it's flexible recovery. We'll show you a couple pictures here. We have many more pictures to show you, which Keller Schrader would love to talk about in detail 
after this uh, webinar. Fast and flexible recovery. You can resume operations very quickly. Optimize cloud, cloud costs. So we talked about this estimation tool. It actually will estimate to the penny of what you'll be paying Azure. And ideally, you'd buy those Azure credits from Keller Schrader to consume that. Now, if you're looking at a low-cost retention, you can use blob storage, which is the S3 buckets, which is cheaper, less expensive storage in the cloud. And that's a great cost-effective long-term retention story. It's increased security, understanding that it's cross-resource groups and cross-regions. And you don't have to maintain that. It is a secure platform from Azure. It's layered defense. You talk about breaches and cyber attacks. It's that multi-factor authentication is built in as a Microsoft platform. It's two-step portability. The key here that's differentiated for Veeam and Backup for Azure and other people's products is that it has a hook back in the back, Veeam Backup Replication at on-premise. So you can instantly restore to on-premise and you can move files back and forth. No one else has that integration back to on-premise platform. And that's more about instant recovery anywhere. You can take those Azure VMs or instant recover to AWS or another cloud provider or back on-premise or to a physical server or to vSphere. All of that is integrated into that platform. Here's a couple of examples. File level recover from Azure. You can see Azure Blob and the Veeam backup for Azure that sits inside of Azure and all the VMs, if you're familiar with Azure, the disks and the snapshots, that file being extracted. Here it comes, the file to Azure Blob Storage, and the overshadowing picture there that really shades out is have the ability to go from any of those platforms to any of those images. Restoring on-premises, there's a lot on this slide. Just understand that the left side you're in Azure, the right side you're on-premise. You can take those images and those VMs inside of Azure that you've taken snapshots natively in Azure and restore them even into ESXi, Hyper-V, or AHV within the Veeam platform. One last picture here, instant VM recovery on-premises. So in less than 15 minutes, you can take something that's in Azure, make it on-premise in less than 15 minutes. And remember, this is just one. You can do hundreds of these if you wanted to at one time if you were hit by cyber attack. How do you get this product? Well, if you have 10 or less Azure VMs, we let you play around with it for free. Remember, support is only 360, uh, 24 hours response time. Ideally, you'd buy it from Keller Schrader and contact them, and then you bring your own license to Azure Marketplace. So let's talk about cloud tier. Any questions on backup for Azure? One of my favorite albums of all time, Queen. So you've got uh, Freddie Mercury, the album is The Game. Well, why does Kevin Scott Carrabba have a picture of a cassette tape? So again, a cassette tape. So this dates myself here, one of my favorite cassettes. This is actually a picture of mine. I've been teased about how dirty this cassette tape is. It's been out, in and out of a lot of players. But understand, if you were to digitize a cassette tape and upload it to the cloud, it's 100 megabytes. 100 megabytes is the average size of an object in the S3 bucket. So why am I talking about this? So let's say we uploaded this to the cloud. There's one song in here in particular that means a lot to me as a Detroit native, and the song is Another One Bites the Dust. In 1985, the Detroit Lions had their best record of all time. They went 4-0 to start the season, had a player called Billy Sims. Another One Bites the Dust took on a new meaning for me. Jimmy, the steel man, actually came out of a version of Another One Bites the Dust. The Lions thought they were fantastic. By the way, they lost the last nine of the 12 games in typical Lions fashion. But if you understand, another one bites the dust. I just want to hear Freddie Mercury announce the letter D and everyone bites the dust. Just want to hear the D. So with everybody other's competitor technology in the world, besides Veeam, you would have to download this entire album in S3 Object Storage to listen to Freddie Mercury do the D. Not so with Veeam. So this is what physically happens. Again, you're talking about the capacity tier in the far right. We have the metadata, the pointers to all those blocks of data. So I can just pull Freddie Mercury's D sound down from the cloud. What does that mean to your business? In this example, it means the 99% cost savings for egress and ingress cloud charges. So you put your data in Azure, you recover a file. With every other data protection vendor in the world besides Veeam, you're going to pay 100% of the egress-ingress 
With Veeam, you can potentially play 99% less. So let's do some simple math. I like simple math. I'm talking to a customer. It's actually a self-driving car business in the United States. They have 81 cars in their fleet. This is before pandemic, but this is a really great idea. For people that can't drive themselves to the doctor, they have these cars show up, people would get in and drive them to the doctor, wait for them, drive them home. Think about all the data that those are generating, terabytes and terabytes of data. They were spending $770,000 a year on AWS. Now, I propose Veeam in their environment. They've been testing it for over two months. It looks like they'll save $700,000 this year by going to Veeam in the cloud. So, tremendous savings, right? And by the way, that's not as much as our product costs. But uh, we'd love you to talk to Keller Schrader about how much it actually does cost. So endpoint protection, Veeam agents. So we do have physical agents. We do VMs, agentless. We do have physical agents as well. So we have Windows and Linux agents. To focus on Windows here, you can take them back up to a USB drive, back to a file folder, to a hard disk, to directly to Azure, or a backup so you see the repositories in the cloud or locally. And endpoint protection has never been more important than ever. Matter of fact, I just did a podcast as the voice of Veeam for Aero Distribution. And the focus is endpoint. Actually, I'll, I'll try to include that, Chris, in what we do if it's released at, uh, early enough. It's supposed to be released this week. It's all about, and think about all these, as a customer right now, you've left the protection of your data center and you're at your house or a coffee shop or you're traveling somewhere. How do you protect that? And like my son who got malware, going to a site that was not even questionable. It was actually a gaming site that he's used before and someone to institute malware. Think about your, your customers and your employees that are going to these sites. This is a way to do agent deployment in seconds. You can just group, pick a group in exchange and have it push out and update automatically these different versions. You can do protection group. You can see everybody in SQL Server, every SQL Server that you see, Every domain controller, you're always on, and exchange, file servers, all these different objects that come into all back to Veeam backup replication. So these backup jobs are based on these protection groups for Veeam backup replication in the suite. Backup job types, you have workstation, server, and failover cluster. All of these can be protected with Veeam. You can see all these nine things. I usually don't have a slide this busy, but you talk about instant recovery to Hyper-V. Application we're processing, there's a little checkbox that says, hey, I have an application on this desktop workstation or server as well. Make sure you back that up and do that uh, with CBT driver. And the CBT driver is just coercing the database of its SQL so you have more than a point in time recovery, also with the logs, which is noted here, translation log, backup for databases. All of this is integrated in our product, and you can choose back and forth to actually protect these. Endpoints make a lot of sense and they're included as part of the universal licensing. That's one of, every workstation or server you do is one universal license. Cool part here, you can enable your employees to do self-service restore by themselves. They can restore a file or a volume. Notice they, the grayed out portions there. You can restrict them so they can't institute their own full backups whenever they want, so you can actually schedule those and overwrite those. You can make those available for their employees. Sometimes they overwrite that so they won't be able to actually stop that. And this is just a technical scheme. All you need to know there is the right is what you can restore to. As you follow the left, it goes to a backup server. Even though this might look complicated, just know we're giving you lots of options to put, place, put your data. S3 blob, long retention in the cloud, a tape server, many different storage platforms, many different hosts, all from reporting, monitoring, Veeam One server. Any questions on that? So let's talk about Veeam Backup for Office 365. It's also changed on April 18th to what's called Microsoft 365. Today there's 200 million active users. 100 million more users will be added in 12 months. If you look at the number that are protected the number of users that are protected today represents about 10 million from Veeam. All the other competitors in this space represent about 400,000 protection users. Now, if you think about that, that's a big discrepancy, Kevin. 
That means only 5% of all Office 365 users are protected. How can that be? First of all, look at the influx of users. Since 2017 to 2020, April 2020, there's now 75 million users. Since the pandemic, they've almost doubled the amount of users that are using Office 365. And what about Teams? Teams in general, if you use Teams today, you'll note that video usage is up 1,000% in a month. Phenomenal. Who backs that up? We do, but really no one else does. What about all those videos and webinars that your company is doing? So take you back to home. Parking garage. I think we've all been here before, whether we go downtown Evansville or Kentucky or Tennessee, wherever you're located, you've been in a parking garage. What's the one thing you have to do before you can enter a parking garage? Always. You have to get a parking ticket. What's it say on the back of that parking ticket? Anybody ever read it? I know where I put my parking ticket, first of all. I put it in my glove box, my wife puts it in her purse, I put mine in a wallet, I have a place in my backpack. If you don't know, I cover Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pittsburgh as a focus territory. And then also as a national truck apartment manager, I cover United States, Canada, India, and the UK. So I've been in a couple parking garages in my life. That one ticket, you gotta grab that ticket. What does it say in the back of that ticket? I've got one right here for you. So it says that the hold it at one park went home, you're allowed to park here, but we're not responsible for anything. I don't, if your car is toast, if your items in your car, if anything happens to it, we're not responsible. Now, about 10 years ago in Detroit, uh, very unfortunate, a parking garage collapsed. Good news is no one got hurt. Bad news is 18 cars were totaled that were brand new. Now, the people that got their cars totaled sued the parking garage. Who do you think won? The parking garage, because this is a shared model. We'll allow you to park here if you pay us some money. This is very similar if not exactly equal to what Office 365 is. This is an actual fact, and I have to explain this sometimes to Microsoft employees, but Keller Schrader knows it very well, and they understand that for you, the customer, Microsoft is telling you it's your data, you own it, you control it, you protect it. But here's the customer misconception. Misconception is you think Microsoft protects your infrastructure and your data. It's actually not true. There's a certain amount of time frame they put on uh, restoring your data, but we'll talk about that exact time frame. Customer reality is they guarantee you high infrastructure availability and reliability, not your data. I have to say before we go into more of these slides, I was doing a conference presentation and I was the only, there was a Microsoft conference, I was the only one there from data protection company. And I did this presentation in about 15 minutes and I got done, and there were about 1,100 people at the event. i not kidding, about 900 came to my booth. And they were all on the phone with their Microsoft representative. Well, Microsoft says it's protected. Well, look at, look at this slide. This is actually from Microsoft's website. Anyone tell me what the bold, deep red with white writing says? Permanently deleted. What does that mean to you? Does that mean you can recover that when you want later? No, I'm afraid not. Unfortunately, it says permanently deleted. So 140 days is the line here. 140 days, on average, no matter what happens, that data is gone forever. Let that sink in. Permanently deleted. Veeam, we can protect all of those for as long as you want. We can consume that in Azure if you'd like, by that through Keller Schrader. And we buy this, we sell it by the user account. But here's the challenges as a customer understanding what's going on with Microsoft and Office 365. You need to understand Microsoft isn't the data owner. You need to understand archiving is not backup. Archiving is a point in time rolling out of a user data. So if you have 300 employees at your company, can you imagine having 300 different archive boxes trying to recover that to recover data? That's a point in time what about yesterday? What about three weeks ago? And what about all the different factors involved? We'll talk about what actually we protect in Office 365. Replicated copies are constantly updated from a single source. So if you have a lose a user here, 
The other 19 locations that Azure is running around the world, you've lost it all there. Or if you've got it actually encrypted, it's encrypted all the different sites. The litigation hold is a use case only. It's not recommended for backup. So we protect Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive for Business, OneNote, and all of Teams. We do have a community edition. If you wanted to try it out for 10 users or less, we'd love you to contact Keller Schrader and actually do a trial, maybe a 30-day trial of actually testing this out. I use the community edition for my personal accounts, even though I could get a free key from Veeam, just to show that I protect my four kids, my wife and I, our six accounts, and I'll 265 with Veeam. So understand what we do here. It's also about recovery. It's accidental deletion, security threats, quickly restore items. You can have some data on premise, some in the cloud, somewhere in the middle. And we do meet legal and compliance requirements. Now to understand Veeam, this is version four of Office 65. To understand Veeam, we release software code. It does one thing, it does it really, really well. And then we keep adding features along the way without charging you more money actually a, a great concept, I think, especially as a customer. And so as you're adding these technologies, you can see all those things we added. One thing we own, because we write our own code, we write our own code, we can make things faster and faster and faster with software updates. And there's usually no reboot needed and no downtime to do our software upgrades. We own all our own code. So we added object storage, which you can as your blog. We added security, so we don't do in-flight, which is we love you to buy e, a go from an E3 license to E5 with Keller Schrader if you want to protect at in-flight data. We do rest at encryption because that's when we actually attach to the data. And it is, again, I mention this a lot, faster back performance. We can tweak things and make things faster and faster. You can see it for yourself. We'd love you to contact Keller Schrader again to do a trial download. You can get our software through Keller Schrader and actually test this out. Six reasons why. We'll actually send this deck out. You can see it. You can think of any one of these reasons. This is not just Office 365. This is really any reason that you would need backup in general. It really is that it's more than an insurance policy. It's a way to recover data. Any questions on that? So powerful NAS backup. Veeam has never had NAS backup before. We did NAS backup through NDMP. We're going to talk about NDMP. But let's talk about NAS technology in general. So I've spent majority, 95% of my career working with network attached storage. I was at the forefront of the very beginning of that market for the world, going to Silicon Valley. I've been traveling to Silicon Valley for 25 years. Very blessed to be doing that. We all understand what a SAN is. Storage area network, connected by fiber channel, some sort of hardware connection. Network attached storage is just what it sounds like. It's network file servers or some protocol, whether that be NFS or SMB with Windows people are familiar with. And different storage types. We've talked about block. Now we're talking about files or NAS. We talk about object being an S3. But here are the challenges with NAS, and I'm sure you're experiencing some of the sprawl in your environment. U.S. customers are keeping data longer. The file so, size is growing. I know when I go to send my presentations, the, the picture of the cloud you saw today, that's a high-res photo. My compressed PDF version of this deck is 300 megabytes. That's not a small file, and that's unstructured data. Why is NAS so important? The NAS market is looking at tripling over the next six years. So in three more years, it'll be a $45 billion market because customers like yourself are using this technology. But before V10, what did Veeam have here? No backup option for NAS at all. File to tape is not scalable and no single file restore. So network data management protocol, which is what our competitors base all their NAS backup on, was created in 1996. I'm very thankful I was NDMP version 1000 expert certified in 1996. Now the 1996 NDMP technology is based on Windows 3.1, Windows 95, file system structure from Windows Explorer via protocol. It's a NoSQL database structure. So think about Windows 95 file explorer. Since 2010, no code has changed. Not one block of code has changed. And it really looks like all of our competitors will continue to use this technology. Now, I have to ask yourself, let's think back to 1996. 
Is this your current cell phone? If it is, then you're using that technology and that cell phone technology, and that's what your competitor of Veeam, if you have a competitive product, that's the technology you're using when it's based on. Is this your laptop? Did you sync your Palm Pilot last night? This is 1996 technology. We decided to write things from scratch. So we wrote our own protocol stack. Now this is an example of NAS out there today. Microsoft, Linux, Synology, QNAP, NetApp, Dell EMC, HPE. These are all NAS devices. We understand what structured data is. It's databases, Cloudera, Oracle, SAP HANA, Excel spreadsheets, IBM DB2. But do we understand what unstructured data is? This is unstructured data. Think about this massive tire graveyard. There's a tractor tire. There's a bike tire. There's a, a two-wheeler in there for bikes. There's massive cars. So this to me is epitome of unstructured data. Different manufacturers, different tire sizes, different cars, trucks, what, tractors, bikes, whatever it would be attached to. Now all of our competitors look at this data and they say to themselves, I have to go build one of these. This is the 1957 Firestone Tire Rubber Company card catalog system. And if you're too young to have ever experienced a card catalog system, you have to archive and the epitome of attaching documents to one of these file folders and structures, pull out one of these drawers, find the tag, it points you to where a book is, update the tag, remove the tag, or put a new tag in, and then close the drawer. Every one of them has to do this to actually do a backup of NAS, except us. What we do is fundamentally different. And by the way, it's a 1977 Polaroid land camera. We take a snapshot of that tire and look on the right. No need to do a backup. No need to do a full organized backup. We never have to do an active full in that environment. In one second, we analyze it and go, oh, everything's organized. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we can back up anything that's NAS. We can leverage snapshot technology of anybody's snapshot. So Buffalo NAS, point in time, HPE, NetApp. You look at, we can use the performance of that network attached storage device instead of our Windows server to actually do all the work. And we invented something called change file tracking. It's very similar to change block tracking if you look at change block tracking in the file system for VMware. It's just this fingerprint file system. We have the ability in seconds to do this. Now, here's a technical overview, parallel reads, backup images, all the way down to your backup copy. The key here is Network attached storage backup isn't about how much storage, it's about how many files. So here's the test we did. First of all, at no active full required. The test we did is we took all of our, uh, it was actually done by a partner, a couple partners organization, they took all our competitors, lined them up, and put us all in the same hardware, except a couple of backup appliance vendors that didn't have the same hardware, but they had the latest and greatest. We did a full backup of two million files. The fastest backup that one of the competitors did was 72 hours. It took us four hours. Then we did an incremental. Incremental is the differential or the change block since the last full. I have a picture for that, of course. I know you don't have your pizza in front of you, and I apologize. Being pandemic, you'll get your pizza later, your certificate. But here's a, a look at lunch. Oh, that's a healthy lunch. Well, that makes me hungry. Can you see the five differences? Did you find it? Well, that's how long it takes Veeam to find those five differences. It only takes us a couple seconds. And then we just back up those differences, those fingerprints. We cache those differences. We do it in seconds. And so the incremental from that, that big storage bake-off, the fastest they did was 24 hours. We did it in 15 minutes. Talk about high performance. What about recovering? So we can recover an entire file share, we can roll back to a point in time, or we can do specific files and folders all through a GUI. And you can also recover from malware attacks. Now that's not all folks, all these other options here. It is encrypted, you can map a drive, there's location tagging, there's PowerShell. There's over 10,000 commandments written that you can harbor from our website. Understand the differentiators with NAS. We invented change file tracking, no NDMP, so none of that 1996 StarTech technology, and you can use any NAS. We can leverage any NAS platform. Competitive summary really is this isn't a bolt-on product. This is an afterthought. 
This is integrated into our product. Question here is how do you buy it? You buy it through Color Shader by Beam Universal licenses. Each license is good for 250 gigabytes. You have one terabyte of NAS data, you use four VULs. Very simple, very portable. So why Beam? I hope I made clear that this is simple, very flexible, and we're extremely reliable. I can tell you the 175,000 downloads since February 18th, zero major bugs. Not a lot of companies can say that. Now, I have a picture for you. This is my cat. Why is Kevin showing us his cat? So I have to tell you, I grew up a dog person, been married 26 years, I know I mentioned. My wife's a dog person, I'm a dog person. Even as four kids, our oldest 25, we've never had a cat. We've, we never had dogs either, we've had fish. But we're always told, dogs, 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 you want a dog. So I thought to myself, I never want a cat, don't need a cat, don't want a cat. Why would I want a cat? Everybody says dogs are the animal to have. So I live about 10 acres rural, and this kitten, this kitten right here, showed up on my doorstep two years ago. I think to myself, I don't want a cat, don't need a cat, why do I want a cat? i tell you what, I have to live at home. They named this guy, his name is Moki. So after the Japanese rice candy ice cream, Mochi, we pronounced it wrong, we call him Moki. This guy is tough. This guy is unbelievable. He went head to head against Coyote. Coyote ran the other way. He can catch a hummingbird in flight. This guy is cool. I want a cat, I need a cat, I want more Mokis. Now this is the same exact process that you would follow in your mind if you're not a Beam customer today. If you don't have Beam today, you think you might not want it, need it, see no reason for it. I can tell you, as we add more and more features and more technology with 375,000 customers now, we just add 4,000 customers a month because it is as cool as Moki. Now, you saw the shirt at the beginning. Is your data protected by a superhero? Actually giving one of these shirts away, and actually on the right side, I've changed it. This is, is your data protected by superheroes? Now, this isn't to say that I think I'm a superhero or that Dean's superheroes in general. We love to enable Keller Schrader and people like Carissa and Matt Barton to be a superhero to you to save the day and save your data with Veeam. And that's the overall goal here. Just want to do a little infomercial here. Our VMOD event, which is a worldwide event, has been moved to virtual since the pandemic. So it's June 17th and 18th. It is two full days, there's 33 sessions. You can sign up for whatever you want, but understand at the very end, Keith Urban will be doing a live concert for anyone that attends VMOD. On June 18th. So we'd love you to learn more about Beam and any questions. And that's what I have today, Krista. Awesome. Well, that was very thorough. Um, the only questions that we got actually during the presentation, and again, if you have some, please put them in that Q&A window. We'll make sure that we um, get them to Kevin. But um, people want to know if you will share your slide deck. Is that something that we can distribute after the fact? I know you said it was pretty large. Oh, no, I'll, I'll make it available uh, on a Dropbox account. You can download, absolutely. Okay, okay. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Matt, is there anything that um, you think that we might need to discuss a little bit further or some questions that came up in your mind during that pe presentation? Yeah, awesome, Kevin. That covered a lot of good material. So from a um, Beam Universal license perspective, so that's the license that would essentially cover any workload in any location, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. And but that's so, really where you so see. If you're a socket based customer today and you wanted to add NAS, we can actually maintain the same license, uh, same license scheme. So you could, you have socket that's tied to hardware, you want to add NAS support, we can add a universal license to that package or convert you so that you're all universal licensing. And that's the same for customers if they have uh, VMs within Azure and on-prem so that we can get them into one licensing model. Correct, so that Veeam Universal licenses can be used for backup for Azure automatically. You can, let's say you have 10 licenses. You bought 10, a 10 pack, eight you're using on premise, you could throw two in Veeam backup for Azure. Okay, because we have a lot okay. of customers that, you know, are, are starting that, that hybrid scenario uh, where they have, you know, some VMs within Azure, but primarily still VMs on prem. So being able to have the same licensing model and have that 
license portability is really important. Absolutely, I can't agree with more. We want to make it as simple as possible. It's it's really one of our differentiators right now, our licensing model. Keep it super simple. You don't have to call us when you move things around. If you want to go, think about a customer that has a lot of physical servers and wants to move to virtual. First of all, you can move all of them in 15 minutes. You have a thousand, 15 minutes. Then you want to move all copies to the cloud. You call no one. You just move them to the cloud, being keep track of everything, all your licensing. Very simple. And there's a certain number of free universals that are included per socket. What's that? Is it like two per socket? It, it averages seven. It, it comes up, we do a conversion at seven to one. So okay. if you're a socket based customer today, in normal terms, it would be seven VULs to one socket. And when, when we say socket, we mean CPU socket or CPUs. It, it, traditionally, Veeam was sold by sockets, which was physically tied to hardware where that is uh, the CapEx versus OpEx model now when you talk about the universal licensing because it's more like leasing a car or leasing a phone. Someone says, well, I physically don't own it, but you do. You, you still have the same support model. And if you look at the cost moving forward, the cost is less expensive and you have more options with the Veeam from our enterprise stack moving forward with Veeam universal licensing. We're not trying to push you in either way. We just know that it's more cost effective for you to do both green universal licensing. So if you're a socket based customer today and you want to add technology, you want to renew, probably at least want to look at the universal licensing. Because it's all at enterprise plus licensing level. Correct. So if you're not familiar with our additions, we have standard enterprise, enterprise plus. It used to be in the, the expert test, if you go through the different additions, and I have to admit it was pretty difficult. So if you were to take the additions and put them in a, a three column spreadsheet, it would span seven pages. So you know, you've got some 219 different options and you'd have to pick and choose what you wanted. So we decided we'd make it real easy. One is standard, one option to buy universally is standard, the other three, Enterprise Plus. We're even making it look, we're gonna try to make that even simpler down the road. So you don't have to try to figure out what option you want anymore get them all. We're coming up on time here. I appreciate everybody being on with us today. Again, if you have any questions or you want to check out that 30-day trial that Kevin mentioned or um, any information on Veeamon, any of that stuff, please reach out to our team. Your Telestrator account manager would be happy to start that conversation. Um, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and end it for the day unless um, you guys have anything else you want to add. So, okay, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Kevin. And thanks, Veeam, for making this possible. We really appreciate the partnership, and we will talk to everyone next time. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care. Yeah, bye-bye.